You're traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are those of imagination. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. God, you, you haven't answered my question. No questions. But, but it's a simple one, a very simple one. Where are you taking me? You'll find out. You come before dawn with no arrest warrant. We don't need a warrant. But of course you do. Not for a hearing. Oh, is that what this is about, an investigative hearing? At such an hour? Chancellor's orders. You mean the Chancellor himself wants to see me? Why on earth? Inside. Is this the Chancellor's office? Inside. Hello. Hello. Oh, you, you'll forgive me, but it, it, it's so dark in here, my eyes. There's a bench along the wall. Why don't you sit down? And you are? Mary Lampert. Uh, Wordsworth. Lampert? Lampert? You work in the Central Registry? I don't work anywhere at all now, but it wasn't in the Registry. I was an English teacher. Oh, yes. Yes, you requested some books from me last semester. But what are you doing here? The same as you, I'm afraid, Mr. Wordsworth. You were summoned for a hearing? We all were. No, I, I beg your pardon. I didn't see you. I'm used to that. Hello there. Hello, Mr. Wordsworth. Your teachers, too? <laughs> Something even less useful. A poet. A published poet? A few small press volumes. Oh, we have a lot of those in the stacks. Quite a number, actually. Your name? John Brodsky. Yes, let, let me see. Um, The Fire Inside and Other Poems? You're the only person outside of a few friends who's ever heard of it. Oh, no, no, you were very well reviewed. The Mid-Atlantic Prize, wasn't it? It was, but they don't exist anymore. And the rest of you, I, I don't mean to be rude. I, after a certain age, well, the eyes just don't adjust very quickly, even with glasses. Jack Cameron. I taught philosophy at the university. How do you do? John Alpert, from the theology department. Another lost cause. Oh, no, don't say that. Vital subjects all in a liberal arts education. I, I'm sure you're here for, for some sort of a reassignment. Put out to pasture is more like it. They're closing the humanities wing. Are you sure? It's already done. The Chancellor signed it into law yesterday. To be replaced by what? Business law, medicine, computer sciences perhaps. Something more practical. The word is they're not going to use human teachers at all anymore. I see. And what of books? They'll be obsolete too, what with the standardized software. In other words, we'll all be obsolete? That's the handwriting on the wall. But that's absurd. Well, what will they do with us? Pay us not to work? I think they have in mind something a bit more efficient. Such as? Lampert! Yes? This way. Yes, of course, I'm ready. I'll go first. Please, that's not necessary. Lampert, Mary, now. Now, wait a minute, where are you taking her? Goodbye, Mr. Brodsky, Mr. Cameron. Mr. Alpert, and you, Mr. Wordsworth. I've enjoyed meeting you, however briefly. Well, we'll talk more later. W when will I see you? Why, on television, perhaps. I'll hold a good thought for you. For all of you. Wait! Where are you taking her? You walk out of this room and into the next at your own risk, because it leads to the future. Not a future that will be, but one that might be. This is not a new world, brave or otherwise. It is simply an extension of what began in the old one. It has patterned itself after every dictator who ever planted the ripping imprint of a boot on the pages of history since the beginning of time. It has refinements, technological advances, and a more sophisticated approach to the destruction of human freedom. But like every one of the superstates that preceded it, it has one iron rule. Reason is an enemy and truth is a menace. This is Mr. Romney Wordsworth in his last 48 hours on Earth. He is a citizen of the state, 
but will soon have to be eliminated because he is built out of flesh and because he has a mind. Mr. Romney Wordsworth, who very shortly will draw his last breath in the Twilight Zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, The Obsolete Man, starring Jason Alexander with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Who's next? Wordsworth, Romney. Wordsworth, ah yes. You should have the file on your desk, Chancellor. Mm Mm-hmm. Field investigation finding. Obsolescence. Yes. Yes. Agreed. Correct. Correct. (sighs) Send him in. Yes, sir. Guards! This way. Thank you. You may approach the desk. If you like. You know why you're here, Mr. Wordsworth? Not entirely, no. Ask him to speak up. I'd ask you to speak up, if you will. Uh, In general terms, uh, yes, sir, but I do have a few questions. Your questions will be answered in due course. Now then, you've been under investigation, Mr. Wordsworth. I have? For the mandatory period of one year and eleven months. I was never notified of any investigation. Notification is not required under the new edicts. Really? I have the results before me. The determination is that you're obsolete. That's an interesting word you use. Therefore, the purpose of this hearing is to make a finding in the matter and sentence you accordingly. You understand that? Yes, sir. I suppose I do. Your occupation, Mr. Wordsworth? Librarian. Ooh. They even have those anymore? A what? A librarian, sir. Has this man had counsel? Yes, sir, he has. Are you sure he knows his rights? He's been given orientation, sir. I'm told that you've had counsel and been given orientation, Mr. Wordsworth. Well, in a manner of speaking. Just prior to entering this room, I did have a brief uh, conversation with someone or other. He was wearing a uniform, very much like your own. That would be one of the subalterns. So you've been instructed... However, I'm still not sure in my own mind that you understand the purpose of this hearing. I'm doing my best, sir. The field investigators in your sector have classified you as obsolete. This finding carries with it serious implications, legally speaking. Do you understand that, Mr. Wordsworth? Serious implications, yes. Now I ask you again, your occupation... I am a librarian. I could lie to you and say curator of records or historian or data manager, but that's my occupation, my profession. It's an honorable tradition. If you people choose to call it obsolete... Ask him to clarify. Yes, clarify. Request clarification of the term. The term, Mr. Wordsworth, you people. You make reference to the state? I make reference to the state. And you persist in declaring your occupation as being that of a librarian? That is correct, sir. A librarian having to do with books? Yes, sir. Books of all types and description. Since there are no more books, Mr. Wordsworth, there is scant need for libraries. Oh, but there are books. Some going back decades, even centuries. The older ones are in constant need of repair. Even the newer ones require preservation. Or do you know that books printed on paper containing wood pulp are in danger of deterioration? A kind of oxidation or slow burning, you might say, if there's so much stored on wooden shelves. Not to mention the effects of light and moisture. Please, Mr. Wordsworth. No, no, no. No, no, the only safe method is to keep them in metal cabinets, in absolute darkness, if possible, in a temperature-controlled environment. Of course, rag or hemp paper doesn't deteriorate at the same rate. That's why some ancient volumes are unyellowed and still quite usable. What sort of books are you talking about? Oh, anything printed before the 19th century. The older, the better. The the Gutenberg Bible is a famous example. To close the subject, with no further need of libraries, it follows that there is little call for the services of a librarian. Now, I must ask for clarification. Did you say... No further need? Case in point. 
a priest or minister. He would claim that his function is preaching the word of God. But of course, since the state has proven that there is no God, that would make the function of such a person somewhat academic as well. Academic? Meaning theoretical, without practical function. But there is a God. You're in error, Mr. Wordsworth. There is no God. You know that? The state has established it. Established it? How? By scientific proof, or the lack thereof. You cannot erase God with an edict. This is not a debate. It's not a matter of laws and proclamations. You are obsolete, Mr. Wordsworth. A lie. No man is obsolete. You have no function. You are an anachronism, a ghost from another time. I'm nothing more than a reminder to you that the state can't destroy words and the concepts they represent by burning pages. You're a bug, Mr. Wordsworth. A crawling insect. A bookworm. An ugly, misshapen little creature that has no purpose here. No meaning. I am a human being, as are you. A human being? Is that what you lay claim to? You're a librarian, Mr. Wordsworth. You're a dealer in books that no one reads, and two set binds and pamphlets and closed stacks in the musty insides of a language factory that spews out meaningless words on an obscure assembly line called the printing press, whose time has long passed. Words, Mr. Wordsworth, that have no substance and no dimension. Like air, like the wind, like a vacuum that you make believe has an existence by scribbling index numbers on little cards. I don't care what you say. Don't approach the bench until you're told to. And I tell you I don't care. I'm a human being. I exist. And if I speak one thought, aloud or in writing, that thought lives even after I'm shoveled into a grave. This I know beyond the shadow of a doubt. Delusions, Mr. Wordsworth. Delusions that you inject into your veins using a needle filled with printer's ink. The narcotic you call literature. The Bible, poetry, essays, all of it. Just an opiate to make you think you have strength when you have no strength at all. You're unfit. You have nothing but spindly limbs and a dream, and the state has no use for your kind. You waste our time, Mr. Wordsworth, and you're not worth the waste. I agree. Let's end this. <sighs> now then. You've made your point. Instruct him. Romney Wordsworth, you will return to detention. Is that where I was? What a polite euphemism. Cell is more like it. To await the finding of this board. Very well. This way. One more question. What happened to Miss Lampert? Who? The school teacher. Her case has been decided. The result will be on this evening's telecast. I'm sure it will be, but I'm asking you, what was your decision? Take him away! Ooh, heretic! Absolute! No function. No function at all. Mr. Wordsworth, how did your hearing go? Well, you know, I'm not honestly sure, but I have a pretty good idea. At least it hasn't been decided yet. Oh, no, not yet, but I don't think it will take them very long. Ambiguity. The devil's playground. And my stock in trade. Miss Lampert hasn't come back yet. That means her case has already been decided. That's what they said. Where would they take her in that case? Back to her living quarters, I imagine, to await the carrying out of the sentence. As for myself, I'd rather carry it out alone. <laughs> not thinking about hemlock, are you? Don't tell me you are. That's not what they use nowadays. Too hard to measure the dosage. Uh, get me a bottle of good scotch. <laughs> I'd like to go out on a bender. Just give me a pen and paper. But they'd only burn it. Uh, not if it's televised. I can recite to the camera. A public reading at last. Some of it has to get through before they cut off the sound. Well, they can't cut it off. It's an official edict. The equivalent of the condemned man's last words. No matter what those words are? Oh, they'll denounce the statement as soon as it hits the airwaves. But until then, 
For one shining, glorious moment, I'll have an audience, and someone somewhere may hear my words and understand. Gentlemen, you're dooming yourselves. As if you believe in the superiority of the system, in its right to exist at all. But it does, with or without moral justification. Do not go gentle into that good night. Dylan Thomas? But rage, rage against the dying of the light. We can rage all we like. No one's going to hear it. No? Think about it. What are you driving at? I wonder if they've reached a decision yet. How do you find, gentlemen? Obsolete! 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 Obsolete. I concur. In the matter of Wordsworth, Romney, the board has made a finding. Bring him before me so I can pronounce sentence. Escort him from the detention room right away. Approach the desk, Citizen Wordsworth. Yes, sir. In the matter of your finding, the board declares you obsolete. Mm-hmm. Your rights are as follows. A comment, Chancellor. The lights, it's my eyes. Can some of the lights be directed at the desk so that I can see who I'm addressing? Your rights are as follows, Mr. Wordsworth. You are to be liquidated within a period of 48 hours. <laughs> they still use that word? Liquidated? But you have an option as to method and precise time. Could you be more specific? There are several prescribed methods, Mr. Wordsworth, including pills, gas, electrocution, lethal injection. It can be done immediately, or an hour from now, or any other time that you request. Are there any other options? The most popular, Mr. Wordsworth, assassination at a time unknown. This way, the, the subject is not aware of either the method or the time. Psychologically, it is somewhat easier. In terms of one's mental state, it's the most humane. Then I'd have to say, I'm a very rich man. Uh, louder, please, and step into the light. <clears throat> I was merely saying, I'm a rich man. I have such a luxury of choices. A few lines come to mind, perhaps you'll indulge me. Cowards die many times before their deaths. The valiant never taste of death but once. Of all the wonders that I have yet heard, it seems to me most strange that men should fear, seeing that death, a necessary end, will come when it will come. That's from Shakespeare, Julius Caesar. So, since you've given me the luxury of choice, I choose the following. To be given an assassin whom I will tell the method of execution. I don't understand. What does he mean? He will tell? Surely he can't be saying. Mr. Wordsworth, please clarify the nature of the request. You will assign me an assassin, Chancellor, just as you stipulated. But only he and I will know the way in which I am to die. I take it that's acceptable? That will be acceptable, Mr. Wordsworth, so long as your your sentence is accomplished within the 48-hour period required by law. And one final request, Chancellor. What's that? I should like to die with an audience. I would like my death to be televised. That, too, can be arranged, Mr. Wordsworth. Thank you. It's not infrequently that we televise executions. It has an educative effect on the population. I have no doubt. Now, as to the time of the liquidation, Mr. Wordsworth? Midnight, tomorrow. And the place? In my room. Gentlemen? Agreed, Mr. Wordsworth. We will choose your liquidator and send him over to you, and he will be duty-bound, just as you prescribed, not to divulge the method you've decided upon. 
Done. Thank you, Chancellor. Whoever said, whoever said the state doesn't have a heart. An odd one. Yes, indeed. And with some very bizarre requests. Bizarre, but to our advantage. He wants his death televised? All right, we'll oblige him. By midnight tomorrow, he'll be crawling up the walls with fear. And we'll televise every moment of it. His horror, his fright, and I dare say his belly-crawling supplications for mercy. What an example. We'll televise it, gentlemen, all over the country. We'll show the people. We'll show them how this obsolete man, this... this librarian, dies. Yes? Words, words, Romney? I am. I'm here to install a television camera. Oh, yes. Uh, come in. Come in. Bring the equipment in, please, guard. Then wait outside. Yes, sir. I'll call you when I'm finished. Very good, sir. I'll be in the hall. Uh, forgive the close callers. A librarian can't afford more than a studio apartment these days. Librarian, sir? Never mind. Would you care for some tea? No, thanks. I'm on a schedule. Oh, of course, yes. Other installations. Alpert, is that one? Uh, how about uh, Cameron? Uh, and the other, what was his name? Um, Brodsky, the poet. I don't know. The guard has the manifest. Oh, oh, yes, I see. Is this all the equipment you need? It's not very much. It doesn't need to be. It's miniaturized. See, all I do is mount this lens on the wall in the corner, and that's it. As long as it gets a wide angle of the whole room. Impressive, I must say. And uh, what about sound? Sir? There'll be a microphone, won't there? Built right in. Full frequency. Broadcast quality. Splendid. Well, I, um, don't let me get in your way. Do whatever you have to do. Good idea. Not a lot of time left. Oh, a couple of hours more? I mean, you probably want some time to yourself for whatever. Yes. I'll be out of here in 20 minutes. Wonderful. I mean, very professional of you. Do you happen to know what happened to the school teacher? School teacher? A friend of yours? Not really. I, I hardly knew her. Mm, not on my list. Oh. You ought to turn on the TV. That'll tell you. Why didn't I think of that? You know, I spend every evening reading. These things are your books, huh? You mean you haven't seen any before? I remember when I was a kid. They had pictures in them. Oh, they have much more than that. And with my collection grown so large, there hasn't been time for television in years. Even the state broadcasts? The state broadcast? Oh, you mean the Chancellor's speeches and so forth. And on the domestic front, the economy is on an upswing. With unemployment virtually nil, corporations are tightening their belts in preparation for higher productivity next quarter when the trade deficit reaches zero. The government is purging thousands of obsolete personnel with tens of thousands to go before year's end. Did he say tens of thousands? One example is Miss Mary Lamport, who was terminated early this evening. For those who missed the live broadcast, here is her final statement. I'd like to quote Saint Exupery. What is essential is invisible to the eye. And it was a Welshman named Dylan Thomas who wrote of the force that through the green fuse drives. Well, I've spent my best years nurturing that life force, helping it break through the concrete and steel that seal us away. And I now know that there is no force in, in the universe that can crush can crush. That's the drugs kicking in. Drugs? Her choice. She wanted to go out painless. They gave her an injection. Sure kept talking for a while though, didn't she? All those words. She almost made it. Made what? I've seen enough. Go, go on with your work. I don't mean to distract you. All done? Surely not. There. Go ahead. Turn your TV back on. See? There's you. There's me. You're right. Isn't that amazing? Sharp and clear for all the world to see. Fiber optics. Some picture, huh? Yes. I don't know how to thank you. Um, what's the cost? No charge. A tip, then. Uh, consider it a kind of bonus. One of my books, perhaps. No, thanks. You can take your pick. Any one at all. They'll only be burned afterwards. I don't have time to read. Thanks, anyway. Guard. Trouble? No trouble. I'm finished, is all. Let's go. 
Take it easy, Mr. Wordsworth. Don't fight it, okay? I'll do my best. It'll be easier that way. Well, now I'm nothing left to do but wait. One hour and fifteen minutes. I'll set the clock, then lie down, and wait. It won't be long now. Mr. Wordsworth. Come in, Chancellor. So, this is how a librarian lives. Have a seat, please. I I'm sorry there's only the one chair, but with so many books. Thank you for coming. Very irregular, Mr. Wordsworth. Is it? Highly irregular. That you came at all? Do you know why I came? Do you? I invited you. By all means, you invited me. But why would I honor such an invitation? A cryptic note from a condemned man asking me to visit him during the last hour of his life. Not normal, I take it? Hardly the norm, Mr. Wordsworth. Hardly what I'm accustomed to. And somewhat suspect, too. How do I know I wasn't invited here for a... For a last pitiful gesture of vengeance on the part of the condemned. Vengeance? After all, I'm more or less responsible for the finding in your case. Your... your demise in less than an hour. Uh, Forty-five minutes, actually. It can be attributed, at least in part, to my decision. Nonetheless, that was the finding. Do you mind if I smoke? No, not at all. You're my guest. I'll tell you why I came, Mr. Wordsworth. Please. Perhaps to prove something to you. And that is? To prove to you that the state has no fears. None at all. <laughs> well, you'll forgive me, Chancellor, but that has the elements of a joke. How so? Well, you come here to my room to prove that the state isn't afraid of me. What an incredible burden that must be prove that an obsolete librarian could have any effect at all on the state. <laughs> I'll tell you why you came, though. I'll tell you the reason that you won't even admit to yourself. And what might that be? I don't fit your formula. Somewhere along the line, there's been a deviation from the norm. Your state has everything categorized, filed and tagged. You are strength. People like me represent weakness. You control and order and dictate. My kind merely follows and obeys. But something's gone wrong. I don't fit, do I? Oh, you fit, Mr. Wordsworth. In a few moments, you'll be cringing and pleading just like they all do. Yes, indeed, you fit. You've got a miserable, worthless little life, but you've also got an instinct for survival. And very soon now, when you know that life is slipping away, when your survival is just a question of minutes, we'll see which is stronger, the state or the librarian. All the country will see. Yes, they will. I take it you've had a discussion with whoever is assigned to your liquidation? Whomever. What? Whom? Object of the preposition. Midnight, isn't it? A mere 40 minutes from now. That's the camera lens up there on the wall. See it? They brought that in earlier this evening. Very efficient. One man set it up in less than 10 minutes. We're being televised now. That's not unusual. In the mass executions last year, we televised around the clock. 1,300 people were put to death in six hours. You never learn, do you? History teaches you nothing. Quite the contrary. It teaches us a great deal. Our predecessors, Mr. Wordsworth, had the beginnings of the right idea. Hitler. Of course, Hitler. Stalin. Him too. But in contrast with popular opinion, their error was not of excess. It was simply that they did not go far enough. Too many undesirables were left around, and undesirables eventually form a core of resistance. Old people, for example, clutch at the past and won't accept the new. The sick, the maimed and deformed, they fasten themselves on the healthy body and damage it. So, we eliminate them. Just like that. 
or people like yourself. They can perform no function for the state, so we do away with them. Only makes sense. What a charming room, Mr. Wordsworth. Small, but functional. Lived here long. For over 20 years. I built the bookcases myself. So I understand. That, incidentally, has kept you alive, that particular talent. Carpentry is a skill, and the state provides considerable leeway for workers who possess certain skills. This chair, for example. You made it. I would have made more furniture, but there wasn't enough space with the books. Unfortunately, you went as far as you could go, which was insufficient. So in a little while, it will be the end of a rather fruitless life as Mr. Romney Wordsworth goes to his own private nirvana. That's what they call it in your books, isn't it? In some books. You're not facing the camera, Mr. Wordsworth. You're cheating the audience. They'll want to see how you die. Sorry? Please, Mr. Wordsworth, show the lens your best side. And don't stifle your emotions. If you feel like crying, go ahead and cry. Or if you want to plead, why don't you do so? Let it all out. Perhaps a high state official might take pity on you. You'd appreciate that, wouldn't you? A little chest thumping, hand wringing, some moaning, sobbing histrionics. <sighs> Suit yourself. Unfortunately, I don't have the time to be enthralled when they do come. I have another appointment this evening. Chancellor. Make it brief, Mr. Wordsworth. You have plenty of time. Smoke as many more of your cigarettes as time allows. How's that? I haven't been entirely fair with you, Chancellor. I invited you here for a very special reason. Would you like to know the method I've chosen for my... my liquidation? I've had a bomb placed in this room. It has a time fuse set to go off at midnight, a few minutes from now. Thoughtful, Mr. Wordsworth. A relatively quick and painless death. Isn't it, though? And yet, knowing that you're going to be blown to smithereens is not the happiest of thoughts, is it? That depends on the individual. Yes, it does indeed. I'll bid you goodbye, then. What kind of idiocy is this? You've locked the door. Yes, I have. You're not going anywhere. You're staying here with me. Open this door at once! I I'm not sure I remember where I hid the key. Question. How does a man react to such a situation? Answer. It depends on the individual. As for myself, I shall sit down and read my Bible. This is insane. Hidden for over 20 years, but the only possession I own that has any value at all to me now. And I intend to sit here and read it until the moment of my death. Let me out of here! Guards! Anyone! Don't waste your breath. There's no one out there. It's one of the rules. You isolate the person to be liquidated so there's simply no one around. Why don't you face the camera, Chancellor? It's important, you know. You're cheating the audience. What are you talking about? You wanted the whole country to see the way a librarian dies. Why not let the whole country see how an official of the state dies, too? Will they see a contrast, Chancellor? Wordsworth! I order you, let me out of this room! Turn to the camera. Let the people see the strength of the state. The resilience, the, the, the courage. Let the people see how a man of steel faces death. I've underestimated you, Mr. Wordsworth. Sit down, Chancellor. You have a Nirvana coming up, too. So, let's have a chat. Odd, isn't it? How equal we have become. Death is an exceptional equalizer. It takes a strong and handsome man like yourself. Uniformed, bemedaled, and it places you alongside a skimpy thing like myself. But in the eyes of God, there's precious little to distinguish us. We are flesh, and blood, muscle, limbs, and we are the same. Understand, Chancellor, we are the same. We are not the same. A man of the state dies with dignity. We shall see. That is, they will see. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul.
leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table for me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Please! Please! There's only one minute left! Let me out! In the name of God, let me out! Yes, Chancellor. In the name of God, I will let you out. Here's the key. Goodbye, Chancellor. This way. Take your hands off of me. What is the meaning of this? You may approach. I don't understand what's going on. You all know me? No further. Stand where you are. There's been a misunderstanding. I've served the state for years. In fact, I'm the one who created the current edicts and passed them into law. I am the new chancellor. You have been removed from office. But why? The field investigators have declared you obsolete. You have disgraced the state. You have proven yourself a coward. You therefore have no function. I, I must protest. Let me speak. Return the prisoner to the detention room while we determine his sentence. The finding of this hearing is that he is obsolete. No! Wait! Obsolete. Hear me out! Obsolete! Obsolete! No! No! Obsolete. Wait! Please! No! Obsolete. No! Obsolete. No! Obsolete. No! No! Obsolete. no. Time is the future, not a future that will be, but one that might be. Not just this story's lesson, but a lesson for all time. So long as men would speak their mind, and so long as tyranny would seek to muzzle them. File this case under M for Mankind in the Twilight Zone. More from the Twilight Zone after this. You are about to enter another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land of imagination. Next stop, the Twilight Zone. Hi, this is Stacy Keach. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our Twilight Zone website at twilightzoneradio.com. At twilightzoneradio.com, you'll find the latest information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas, including behind-the-scenes photographs, plus the newest product releases, trivia contests, ways to contact us, other Twilight Zone-related info and merchandise, plus links to other fascinating websites. So make your next stop TwilightZoneRadio.com. Visit TwilightZoneRadio.com to purchase these Twilight Zone radio dramas on cassette and CD, or call toll-free 1-866-989-ZONE. That's 1-866-989-9663. The Obsolete Man, starring Jason Alexander, with Stacy Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and based on a script by Rod Serling. Heard in the cast were Christian Stolte, Joe Forbrick, Meg Falcon, Rick Plastina, Doug James, Rob Riley, Lynn Foley, Carl Amari, Roger Wolski, and Vince Amari. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. The producers of the Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises, Carol Serling, Dennis Etchison, Dick Brescia Associates, Claire Simon Casting, Paul Patch, Terry Jennings, the American Forces Radio and Television Service, our sponsors and our radio affiliates for helping make this series possible. 
This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Roger Wolski for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking. <laughs>